so again, right now we're just standing by for this deorbit burn to start. We are expecting it to start in about a minute or so. And then after that, it's gonna take a little over 15 minutes uh, to complete. Yeah, so we have already jettisoned the trunk, as you heard us talk about a couple minutes ago. Uh, that was the last thing Dragon needed to do before it is able to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. Um, and like we said, that that'll be about a 15-minute burn, and then we will have parachute deployment and splashdown after that. So, uh, like Dan said, kind of the calm before the storm, we're going to have a lot of activity coming up uh, once we do pass through the re-entry burn. Um, but at this point, we should be getting confirmation of the deorbit burn uh, in a couple of seconds here. That's right. And once the deorbit burn is complete, it's just about, I'm trying to do quick math in my head as I look at everything, uh, but it's just about 40 minutes or so until Dragon's scheduled to be back down in the water. So it's, it's a pretty quick ride from being in outer space to being right back down in the ocean. And we just, just had heard it. confirmation of the deorbit burn. So, like we said, uh, this will last about 15 minutes. So, um, deorbit burn has begun. At this point, Dragon has begun to re enter the Earth's atmosphere. It's going to get a little toasty, um, but we're excited to, uh, to, for this to happen as it is the next step, the next milestone in its journey home. That's right. And again, ultimate destination down in the Atlantic Ocean and there are boats standing by. We'll go through all the recovery forces and everything on site, uh, but there is one main recovery boat. It's the Go Searcher mm -hmm. uh, and that's going to have all of the SpaceX recovery teams who are responsible for actually going out and picking the capsule up out of the water. Uh, that is a view of the Go Searcher. That was This is actually a camera view from one of the other boats that's in the area, uh, the Go Navigator that has the combined NASA team on board as well. Uh, so once we actually have crew on board, everyone's going to be on one boat, so it'll be a little bit tighter quarters. Uh, but you'll have obviously the SpaceX people to go and recover the capsule, and then the NASA people typically also bring along the flight docs and the nurses. Uh, anybody who's ever seen a, a landing in a Soyuz over in Kazakhstan is familiar <laughs> with that. Once the crew comes home after about a six month period, it's important we get a quick medical check out with them, just take the vitals, make sure they're doing okay, and help manage as they readapt to Earth's gravity for the first time in you know up to six months or longer. So all everyone will be on one boat, but for today we do have two boats, so we'll get some additional views hopefully mm -hmm. uh, from those different cameras as we get to watch Dragon come down. But for now, we are in that deorbit burn, so we got a couple more minutes until that is complete, and then we're one step closer to Dragon being back. Yeah, so while Dragon is re-entering the Earth's atmosphere, we're going to pause for a few minutes uh, until the deorbit burn completes, so be sure to stick around and we'll see you in a few minutes.
though, right now. We're about halfway through that deorbit burn. So again, we expect it to last about 15 minutes and 20 seconds. Uh, the visiting vehicle officer all, all the way back in Houston uh, was just reporting to the, the station flight director, again, that we were about halfway through. Uh, we're continuing to get a couple of uh, views from the boats. And again, those are cameras that are going to be tracking Dragon once it's coming down under those parachutes. Uh, and we're also starting to get, it looks like this is a view from a WB-57 airplane. And so we have a number of assets out there uh, off the Florida coast. Uh, again, there's two boats, or two ships rather, uh, both with uh, tracking cameras on board. And uh, NASA also flying its WB-57 aircraft, uh, typically used for high altitude uh, weather research and uh, other science missions. Uh, but it has a uh, camera affixed on it and should hopefully give us some views of Dragon coming down under those parachutes. So there on your screen, you see a beautiful shot of Go Searcher, which is our primary recovery vessel. Uh, there on the front part of the ship, you can see what would essentially be the crew's quarters uh, during the wait. Um, they could be out to sea, depending on how rough the waves are, um, for a couple of weeks to just a couple of days, depending on the re or the splashdown point. So they're coming into the view um, on the right-hand side of your screen. At the top is actually the helipad. Um, for helicopters to land if we need to uh, take the astronauts to shore quicker than uh, just having them ride along on the ship. And really in something that I just absolutely love about this vessel is underneath that helipad uh, are actually medical quarters. So we're able to uh, get the astronauts checked out immediately after um, egressing from the capsule and we're able to check them out there and give them a warm welcome, uh, not on land yet, obviously, but uh, it's just such a, an incredible vehicle there that we're able to, to sustain so much activity uh, once the, while we're waiting for the astronauts to splash down and then obviously once they are on board. It's also important to note, so right now the teams are about 200 or so, give or take, uh, nautical miles off the coast. That won't be the case when we are bringing crew members back. Uh, that landing zone much closer in. I think it typically ranges out about 20 to 24 nautical miles or so uh, away from the port. So that gives them the capability to then get back in within just a couple of hours instead of the a little over a day that it's looking like it's going to take the teams to bring Dragon back after this mission. Um, but so there we have some uh, views from Dragon as it is re-entering the atmosphere. It's, uh, it's pretty dark in space. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're still in the midst of that deorbit burn. We're expecting that to take about five more minutes. So that's, that's pretty unique getting views from the spacecraft while that deorbit burn is still underway. But again, this is just the final maneuver, that final firing of those Draco thrusters just to bring Dragon out of orbit and set it up on a trajectory to ultimately splash down over there in the Atlantic whereas you were just seeing the recovery teams are standing by, ready and waiting to receive. <laughs> and again, this deorbit burn lasting, or planned to last about 15 minutes and 20 seconds. And this is just to ultimately carry Dragon out of its circular orbit. So right now it's been in a circular orbit just beneath the space station's orbit, we call it the co-elliptic orbit, uh, for the last several hours in this deorbit burn. It's going to radically change that planned orbit, uh, basically setting it up to intersect back down with the Earth, back down there in the water where the recovery teams are waiting. Now that we have a full view of the recovery vessel on the very right side of your screen, we can see a portion of the ship that we weren't able to see before. And that's actually the portion of the ship where uh, once the Dragon capsule is close enough, it will be lifted up out of the water uh, by that vertical piece that you see there. It'll actually actuate out over the water and lift the Dragon capsule up out of the ocean and then bring it back onto the boat and set it down into its nest. 
Uh, so pretty cool. Uh, this is this is new. Um, a new technology that we've installed on this ship specifically for our Crew Dragon missions. So it's a, the, like we said before, this is a demonstration mission and while our recovery team has been practicing for uh, recovery operations, this is obviously the first time that they will be practicing with a vehicle that's coming from space. So we're all very excited to be bringing you live coverage as all of this unfolds uh, over the next hour or so. And yeah, and to give you a timeline of that recovery period, uh, it's expected to take a little under an hour or so uh, for the teams to actually have the capsule back up on the boat, which in a situation where there's crew on board, that's about that hour to get the crew out of the water and onto the boat so they can do all of their initial medical checks and everything else that we typically do after crew members are returning from these long duration missions. The, w the waves looking pretty calm though, looking like really good conditions out there uh, in the Atlantic. Again, they're a little over 200 uh, nautical miles off the coast of Florida, and they'll ultimately be bound back for uh, Port Canaveral, mm -hmm. uh, where the, uh, the spacecraft's gonna get brought back in and handed over to the SpaceX teams there, where they're gonna begin processing and then pretty much getting ready to turn it around for that ascent aboard. Yeah. Um, we've been monitoring the recovery weather uh, conditions over the last several days, and now that recovery day has uh, has come upon us, we can see that we have beautiful skies. Uh, and and rel well, in my unprofessional nautical knowledge, uh, relatively calm seas by by my eyes. Um, but you know, it's really difficult to be able to predict what the weather is going to be like uh, at sea very far in advance. So we're all very happy to be able to have clear imagery of the recovery team. Uh, uh, as we as we make progress here. I feel like we've lucked out with Florida weather so far <laughs> on, on this mission. All right, and we're here and there's about one minute left in this deorbit burn, so just about done with that. And again, this is just that final maneuver to begin bringing Dragon out of space and down to the ocean. We're still getting a couple of views from on board the Dragon spacecraft. That's what you're looking at right now. Now we're just going to stand by and listen for how the deorbit burn went. Should be wrapping up momentarily. So, like Dan said, we are waiting confirmation of the conclusion of the deorbit burn. Uh, it's been going on for the last several minutes, and like we said before, Dragon departed space station earlier today, performed a number of departure burns, and now we are hopefully just exiting the the final uh, burn, and that's the re-entry burn. Uh, and there on the left-hand side of your screen, you can see our recovery vessel waiting for uh, the splashdown of Dragon. Uh, once we exit the this, um, once we exit the 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 re-entry burn, we will have parachute deployment. Um, the first one of those will be the drogue chutes, the smaller chutes that slow the vehicle down, followed by the main parachute deployment and that will slow it down even further, allowing it to come to a, a, a slower velocity as it approaches the, the surface of the ocean. And we are being told that was a nominal burn. So the deorbit burn is complete. Dragon is on its way home. <laughs> and so the next thing that's gonna happen is that nose cone on Dragon is gonna get closed. We heard that process is now in work. And then it's time for Dragon to really get through the Earth's atmosphere and ultimately splash down. So uh, that's where the vehicle is going to heat up tremendously because again, you have to keep in mind Dragon traveling at thousands of miles per hour right now. And when it hits the thicker part of the Earth's atmosphere, uh, it's going to heat up tremendously from the friction. And this is actually video of the nose cone starting to close on the Dragon spacecraft. And again, that nose cone just closes to protect that top portion of the vehicle from all of the re-entry uh, events, not only the re-entry through the Earth's atmosphere, but also once it's down in the water. 
and that protects the guidance and navigation and control sensors on top of Dragon and also uh, that docking ring uh, that it uses to attach to the space station. So again, what you're seeing right now is the nose cone closing on the Dragon spacecraft uh, as we await for it to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. So that nose cone looks like it's just about closed. We'll wait for co final confirmation uh, that everything looks good with it. But then pretty soon, we're gonna be looking towards the actual entry interface. So that's again, where Dragon starts hitting enough atmosphere that it's gonna start heating up. Because right now it's still high enough, uh, even following that deorbit burn that it's still not feeling those effects. Uh, but the atmosphere is gonna get thicker as it starts to descend and that's gonna heat the vehicle up. That's why you always have uh, this heat shield on the bottom of these spacecrafts. And that's why a lot of them are in these, uh, this conical shape as a lot of engineers I've talked to, they like to say physics haven't changed since the 1960s. Uh, when we made the spacecraft back then, it was for that sh it was mm -hmm. that shape for a reason. Uh, and so that's why it's so common to see this capsule design, just because of how you re-enter the Earth's atmosphere, it makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. So we just heard confirmation that the nose cone hooks have begun the process of securing the nose cone into place uh, prior to that re-entry burn. Right, and so there's actually an anticipated time where you lose signal with the spacecraft, and that's just because as you're re-entering the Earth's atmosphere and you go through that intense heat, uh, plasma actually builds up on the outside of the spacecraft, and you can't mm -hmm. send or receive signals from there. So it's very common when there's people on board, you'll lose the voice communication between them and the ground, and you'll lose all the telemetry or the data streams that you have coming from the spacecraft to rooms like the Mission Control Center just behind us here in Hawthorne. So that'll be coming up. We're expecting that to happen at about 5, what time is it? 5.33 a.m. Pacific. <laughs> uh, so coming up in just about 20 minutes from now. Exactly. And so after we are able to get through that phase of the mission, like we said before, following that will be the deployment of the parachutes and then splashdown. Right. So just a quick recap in case if you uh, have just joined us recently. Uh, we have departed from the International Space Station. Dragon completed a series of four departure burns in a, uh, a slowly choreographed maneuver. And uh, now we have already jettisoned the trunk of the the, the Dragon spacecraft. We have completed the, the, the deorbit burn, and now we're just starting to come back down through the Earth's atmosphere and the final leg on Dragon's way home. <laughs> That's right, so that nose cone's closed, and we're just gonna be standing by to wait until we go through that entry interface. Again, that'll be about 20 minutes from now. Uh, and then once it's down through there, it's time for the parachutes. And we talked about the parachutes a little while ago, and we should hopefully get to see those parachutes maybe from the plane. Uh, but once it's down beneath the cloud deck, so we should be able to see them from the boats that'll be standing by out there at the recovery zone. And it comes in two different stages. Can you walk us through the parachutes real quick? Yeah. So with the parachutes, we will have the drogue parachutes. Those are the smaller chutes that will come out that will slow the vehicle down uh, a little bit. And then we will have the main parachutes. Those are clearly visible by the orange and white coloring on them. Very iconic if you've looked, watched the pre our previous Dragon Splashdowns for uh, the cargo resupply missions. So we will have that. And then that's what will slow the vehicle down enough to have a safe splashdown in the water. So um, at this point, another fun fact about Dragon, um, in the return to Earth, the seats inside the capsule at this point have actuated or turned into the re-entry position. So depending on what phase of the mission we are in, the seats will actually um, actuate or, or adjust the angle to make sure that the G-forces that the astronauts will be experiencing um, are in the right places. So. Um, with that being said, we will take a quick break uh, as we <laughs> active operations here at SpaceX. <laughs> um, so with that uh, being said, we will take a quick break. Be sure to stay tuned with us as we um, go through this period of anticipated blackout with the Dragon capsule. We'll be back in just a few as we uh, come back in anticipation of that parachute deployment. Stick around.
you're just now joining us. We have had a successful deorbit burn, so that was the last major milestone. Oh, we've also confirmed that the nose cone is closed, the hook's all engaged, and so now we're just waiting for Dragon to begin making its way through the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, that deorbit burn lasted a little over 15 minutes and was reported that it was done successfully, no issues, and Dragon is now on its way home. You're continuing to get some pretty great views from the boats out there in the splashdown zone. Uh, and we're also going to be on the lookout for some video, possibly from an aircraft that we have in the area. Uh, one of NASA's WB-57 research planes uh, is going to be trying to get some views of Dragon and the chute deploy and actually coming down under the parachutes. There are some clouds in the area, so the boats might not see it right away. But once it's underneath those cloud decks, uh, they'll have some pretty great views of it coming down. So there on your screen, again, you can see our primary recovery vessel. Uh, that is, whoop, well, there it went. <laughs> uh, but that is a, a, our recovery ship that is fully equipped with medical quarters for checkouts. Once we do have crew uh, on board Dragon and for our upcoming missions, they will be able to come out of the capsule and get a full medical checkout immediately afterward. There's also a helipad there where a helicopter can land, it, land in the event that we might need to get them back to port. Uh, sooner than what the boat may be able to go. And there on your screen, you can actually see, I mentioned earlier, the, uh, the, the, the lift that will uh, bring Dragon out of the water has actuated into its recovery position. So that you can see on the right-hand side of your screen at the end of the boat. And that is what will actually take Dragon out of the water, lift it up, and then place it into its nest, which uh, is the official term for it, uh, on the ship. And then that would be considered um, the, the end, at least whenever we get to that point, that will be the end of our webcast today. Uh, but at this point, we're still waiting for the, uh, the parachutes to deploy and then for the entire recovery operation, which, like I mentioned before, the recovery team has practiced this, but obviously not with a vessel that has come down from the International Space Station yet. So a lot of firsts that we'll be seeing today, and we're really excited to be able to share that with you. Yeah, and if you missed the very beginning, the fun historical tidbit we have we had for today was it's been almost 50 years to the day since we've landed a spacecraft designed for humans in the Atlantic Ocean. That last one was Apollo 9, and that was back on March 13th, 1969. It was actually supposed to land in the Pacific, but ended up shooting for the Atlantic, and that was the last time they landed one in that area. So it's going to be <laughs> exciting to see this water recovery. Uh, all of our crew members for the last couple of years, well, basically since we stopped flying the space shuttle, have come down for land landings over in Kazakhstan on the Russian Soyuz spacecraft. Uh, and, but in the not too distant future, we'll have crew members uh, Doug, uh, Doug Hurley and Bob Bankin, uh, still waking up. Uh, <laughs> they'll be on the Dragon uh, for the Demo 2 mission a little bit later this year. So everything looking really good so far. We're going to continue to stand by and wait for that entry interface. We are just about 20 minutes away from when we're expecting to actually see Dragon under those parachutes. So not much longer, good things to come. There's a lot of anticipation. There's a crowd growing uh, behind me here at SpaceX headquarters. Our mission control center is just down there. And uh, you can probably hear the voices in, in, in the, the room around us. And the crowd is definitely starting to grow in anticipation of Dragon's reappearance. Uh, so with that being said, we will take a quick break as we await for Dragon to re-enter and for those parachute deployments. Uh, stick around. We'll be back in just a few.
so we're getting a bit of a treat here. You're getting a live view inside the Dragon capsule as again, it's getting closer and closer to that entry interface coming through the Earth's atmosphere and then splashing down in the Atlantic Ocean. But first, we have a very special guest, somebody <laughs> who's gonna be on board a Dragon in the not too distant future, NASA astronaut Bob Bankin. Bob, thanks for being here. Thanks for taking a couple of minutes. I know you're following along with the teams. There's a lot of excitement. How are you feeling about the mission so far? Well, I think I said this before when we were out here for the uh, ascent phase and docking, just super excited. You know, of course, this one is the precursor for our mission that's uh, upcoming here. And so when this one's done successfully, we'll be one step closer to our flight. That's awesome. Yeah. So what is in store for you between now and that flight? What kind of preparations do you have left to do? Yeah, that's a great question. We have a significant amount of uh, training that we need to go through. So we'll walk through all the various phases of flight. So we'll do pre-launch. We'll get suited. We'll do that here in uh, Hawthorne in the Buck. We'll do a walkthrough at the Kennedy Space Center, mm -hmm. actually on the launch pad learn a little bit more about the emergency escape system if we should need that uh, uh, prior to launching into space. And so uh, we'll walk through all those different scenarios. Then we'll head back uh, uh, out here again for a couple of other events associated with docking and of course with the re-entry. Awesome. And so we're getting views inside the Dragon spacecraft and I mean, a camera's okay, but it can't do the real <laughs> thing justice. What's it like to be like in a spacecraft when you're coming back through and everything's heating up? Yeah, there's a couple of pieces of coming back through the atmosphere. The first one is really emotional for those of us who've uh, seen a lot of spacecraft come back. It's just a, it's very special to, to kind of go through that experience. And it's a, it's a physical thing as well, as you actually see the light from the uh, atmosphere as it heats up the external uh, portions of the spacecraft. You see some orange lights flickering, the plasma kind of go past the windows. The windows will be down in our, near our feet uh, on this vehicle. That'll be our, our, our closest view out the window per se, but uh, uh, it's definitely something that we'll be able to see and know the outside of the vehicle is going through something pretty severe and uh, we'll be hoping it takes care of us as it takes us through entry. That's incredible. I can't even imagine what that experience yeah, might be like. Yeah, it's remarkable. Again, there's the physical piece of it. You can, you know, sensations that come in with the light, but there's also the emotion of knowing that you're taking all that energy that you put yeah. into the vehicle to get it into orbit. It's all got to come back out so that you can get back to the ground safely. So it's been a while since you've been to space. Is there anything you're really looking forward to when you get to the space station? Anything like what's what's your bucket list once you get back up there? You know, for me, when I get back to the International Space Station, I really am looking forward to seeing it completely complete. I was pretty close with my flight. Uh, we put the uh, cupola uh, on the underside of the space station. Oh. One of the things close to the, the, the construction complete on the International Space Station. So I'm looking forward to getting back in there and actually experiencing uh, sunrises and sunsets again. They're just uh, remarkable from on orbit. Not quite the same as they are from the ground and uh, can't get that anyplace else. Yeah. <laughs> Last question for you. I'm sure you've been following along uh, on social media. You've seen the photos of our zero G indicator. Mm -hmm. um, now he's not coming back until you bring him back for us. So you'll have a little bit of time to play with him while you're on station. Is there anything that you would like to teach a uh, little earthy while you're up on station with him? Yeah, that's a that's a good question. I didn't actually realize that uh, Little Earthy was going to stay on board the <laughs> space Earthy station until uh, Lee Rosen, one of your uh, yeah. uh, folks here at SpaceX, come and let us know uh, when we when we sat down to watch on docking, and he said, "Hey, we're going to need Earthy back. You got to bring him <laughs> back." And so uh, I think our plan is to have him teach us. He's going to welcome us aboard probably when we get there. And I think Ann and David and Oleg have uh, trained him up well, so hopefully he can walk us through the emergency brief and. He's a full-fledged station crew member by the time that we get there. Well, it definitely looks like he's been getting a crash course in just about everything. Yeah, he should have it all, and he ought to be able to transfer it to us. That's part of being a, a crew member that arrives and takes over responsibilities on the International Space Station. That's very cool. Well, we certainly look forward to him coming back as well as you and Doug in our Demo 2 mission in a couple of months. So it'll be very Thank exciting. You, very much looking forward to it, as you might imagine. <laughs> Us All as well. Right. Thank you. Well, we're going to get back to the re entry interface, Bob. We're going to let you go watch along because, again, vested interest in all, everything that's happening. <laughs> Thanks so much for jumping upstairs real quick and talking about this. Thank you again. Thank Dan. you very much. <laughs> Thank you. So, with that, we. Uh, 
are awaiting the deployment, or excuse me, the, the, the final phase of the re-entry of Dragon spacecraft as it's coming back through the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, I'm still kind of reeling from his comments about what it's like to actually come barreling through the Earth's atmosphere, uh, something that you see depicted in movies and TV shows, of course, but to hear it live from the source is pretty cool. And that's exactly what Dragon and Ripley are doing right now. Uh, so we brought you a live view of that just a couple of minutes ago. Um, that was pretty cool that we were able to get that shot. Like we yeah. said, uh, plasma will be building up on the exterior of the vehicle as it's re-entering the atmosphere. So um, there's a blackout period that we are that we were expecting. Uh, and that's where we're at right now. So but well, we can't bring you a view of Ripley on her journey back to the Atlantic Ocean. You can see a view of our recovery ship there. Uh, like I said before, we can now see that the lift arms have actuated out into the recovery position, and they're like that in anticipation of Dragon uh, being pulled in to position closer to that the, the end of the ship and being lifted up into the, into the um, recovery nest. And you got to imagine the teams out there on the ocean are ready for this to come home. And again, since they're about 200, give or take uh, nautical miles out to sea, they actually left yesterday. So they've been out on the water for some time. So they're ready and waiting. <laughs> again, the, the prime team is on that ghost searcher. And that's a bunch of SpaceX technicians who are going to be responsible for going out on some fast boats uh, that will deploy from that prime ship. And they'll begin just basically getting the capsule stable and then bringing it in closer to ultimately get hoisted up on the ship. Also going off to make sure that they get those parachutes as those get jettisoned from the capsule at pretty much just at the moment of touchdown. So uh, we're just going to be ready to watch all of that unfold pretty soon. We should be seeing those parachutes in about 10 or 11 minutes mm -hmm. from now right after Dragon begins that final plunge through the Earth's atmosphere. So we're getting a lot closer. Things are really going to pick up once we get those first views of Dragon over the uh, the Atlantic there. Absolutely. So like Dan just said, we've got about 10 minutes until we see the first deployment, which are the deployments of the drogue parachutes. Uh, so with that being said, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be, we'll be back in a few as we get closer to parachute deployment.
so this is a view from that WB-57 airplane. You were looking at dragons streaking across the sky on its re-entry through the Earth's atmosphere, aiming for a splashdown in just a little while from now. So it's pretty exciting that we get this shot right now as it is our first view from planet Earth of the Dragon capsule since it lifted off from Cape Canaveral uh, just several days ago. I will say this is this is a pretty rare treat to be able to see this here. And again, this this video is coming from a NASA airplane that uh, we're flying around that recovery zone there, a WB-57. It's commonly used for a lot of atmospheric studies and other mm -hmm. science missions, uh, but able to put a tracking camera on it to try and get uh, this uh, re-entry through the Earth's atmosphere today. We're hearing that they should have AOSO acquisition, acquisition of signal back with the Dragon spacecraft. Right now it's about 46 kilometers in altitude. Yeah, so just for orientation purposes, if you've seen our, our launches previously, you might be familiar with the angling of this as takeoff. Uh, reminder, this is re-entry. Um, the plane is below the Dragon spacecraft and the camera's looking upward as it's coming over the spacecraft. So it looks like uh, from the orientation of the the imagery there, the dragon is going up when in fact it is it is still coming back down towards Earth. And again, just keeping you on the timeline. So we actually acquired signal uh, about a minute ahead of when it was expected. Where we're going to be looking for those initial drogue shoot deployments at about 41 minutes after the hour. So after Dragon gets a little bit lower down, we're going to be keeping an eye out. You're going to see the drogue chutes deploy initially, followed by those four main parachutes, uh, much larger and able to slow the vehicle down for a much softer splashdown in the ocean. We should be getting that drogue, sh drogue shoot deployment in just about two minutes now. And just heard that we're now below 30 kilometers. And if you're just now tuning in, this is Dragon. This is Dragon coming home. This is from a camera on board a chase plane there at the, the landing zone over the Atlantic, about 200 or so nautical miles off the coast of Florida. We're under 30 kilometers, continuing to descend. And the next milestone we're gonna be looking for is parachute deployment. And here and we're now about 20 kilometers in altitude. Dragon spacecraft continuing to descend. It's now subsonic, so already starting to slow down thanks to the aero braking, basically slamming into that Earth's atmosphere, causes a lot of friction and allows the vehicle to eventually reach its terminal velocity, basically. Uh, and then those parachutes are gonna kick in. So there you have visual confirmation of the deployment of our drogue parachutes. This is the first of two parachute deployments. And so those drogue chutes do the initial slowing and then they're ultimately gonna pull out the four main parachutes responsible for really slowing the spacecraft down prior to that flashing. You can hear cheering here at SpaceX headquarters as the employees that have gathered around our mission control center are sharing the same view as you. Uh, what a gorgeous shot of Dragon coming back down. 
can't ask for a more picture perfect <laughs> shot than that. And yes, all, all four shoots now deployed. It's going to continue to descend. It's going to continue to slow down and then ultimately splash down in the Atlantic there. We're now under a kilometer in altitude. Just about 750 meters to go. In case if you're just joining us, you can see on your screen there, Dragon re-entering, has just re-entered the Earth's atmosphere after departing from the International Space Station. We have a gorgeous shot of four healthy parachutes um, deployed and slowing the vehicle down as it is approaching the surface of the Atlantic Ocean uh, off the coast of Florida. And it's continuing to descend under those chutes. We just passed 500 meters. Everything continuing to look good via reports to all the flight control teams. Now we're at about 400 meters. And just passing 300 meters, continuing to descend. We might be right on time. We were planning on splashing down at about 5.45 a.m. Pacific, and we're getting real close to that bingo time. Just past 200 meters. And we have confirmation that Dragon is now under 100 meters, uh, is 100 meters above the, the surface of the ocean. So next up, spin, standing by for splashdown. That splashdown came right on time, 5.45 a.m. Pacific, 8.45 a.m. over on the East Coast. The teams that have been ready and waiting, they were staged just a few nautical miles away. They're going to start moving in now. You can see those two fast approach boats already speeding their way towards the capsule. While there's still a little bit more work to be done at this point, like we said, uh, the recovery team has to safe the vehicle and then uh, lift it onto the recovery vessel. Uh, however, obviously by the excited cheers uh, here at Mission Control, the splashdown is an enormous event for us uh, in terms of the safe re-entry, um, or excuse me, the safe return to Earth from the International Space Station. Right, and you'll, you'll notice two boats on their way, one boat actually responsible for beginning to safe the vehicle and get it ready to go up onto the boat. The other one's going to go off and collect those parachutes as those four main chutes actually get jettisoned away from the spacecraft as soon as the vehicle detects that it's splashed down in the water. But if you missed it, I, I'm really sorry because uh, that was really <laughs> cool was to beautiful. see. Uh, but Dragon did splash down at 5.45 a.m. Pacific time, 8.45 a.m. over there on the East Coast where they're now moving in on a Dragon spacecraft in the water, ready to recover it. 
Exactly. So like we said, the recovery team has been ready and waiting for a dragon splash, for, excuse me, for a dragon splashdown. Uh, it's been quite the morning evening. Dan and I have been here since yesterday night uh, bringing you coverage from uh, Dragon departure from the International Space, Sta Space Station now all the way down to Splashdown. So uh, it's a great next milestone and we are excited to bring you coverage of the recovery operations as well. Um, but we have a few minutes before that happens so I'm, we're going to take a, a break momentarily and we will continue bringing coverage uh, as the recovery operations progress.